A very good evening. My name is Nicole Sia, and I am the candidate for Marine Parade GRC. I found out that uh, Mountbatten CC did not let you guys use the toilets because you guys are attending an NSP rally. I wonder what it would have been if it was a PAP rally. Talk about double standards. <laughs> anyway, tonight I will be addressing you in three languages, Malay, Chinese and English. So do bear with me. Saudara dan saudari, salam sejahtera. Di rumah, nenek dan ibu saya berbuat dalam bahasa Melayu salam sendiri. Tetapi saya sendiri tidak begitu pandai berbuat dalam bahasa Melayu. Tapi hari ini saya ingin mencuba. Sebagaimana saya harap anda semua akan cuba untuk memberi saya dan kawan-kawan saya semua peluang untuk menjadi wakil anda. Saya mempunyai visi untuk Singapura di mana tidak kira apa bangsa atau agama kita semua dapat hidup dalam harmoni seperti sekeluarga yang besar. Saya tahu, saya tahu itu adalah janji negara kita. Tidak kira bangsa, tidak kira agama. Tapi saya takut itu tidak benar. Saya tahu ramai dari panda anda yang masih berasa marah atas komen MM Lee tentang warga Islam Singapura. Sebagai seorang warga Cina Singapura, saya ingin meminta maaf. On behalf of the Chinese Singaporeans, I want to apologize to the Muslim community for the comments that MM Lee made. Saya ingin meminta maaf atas komen MM Lee itu. Saya ingin anda tahu bahawa harapan saya adalah untuk kita semua bergerak maju sebagai satu rakyat Singapura. Tidak kira bangsa atau agama. Saya ingin membina sebuah komuniti di mana tiada orang yang akan tertinggal. Ini termasuk anda semua. Marilah kita. Bersatu sebagai rakyat Singapura Marilah kita ambil kembali apa yang milik kita Marilah kita ambil kembali tanah air kita Terima kasih Terima kasih 现在是寻求改变的时候了。过去五年出现了好多问题，然而，当国人需要帮助时，政府却没有伸出援手。只有在做过去几个星期里，他们才及时提供解决方案。我要问的是，在过去五年。当我们需要你们时，你们在哪里？当国人在过苦日子时，你们又在哪里？一个国家来说，我们拥有高楼大厦和蓬勃的经济发展。当但我们在取得成长时，不该快把我们的国人抛在后面。这回，反对党有能力提出有效的解决方案。我们一直说要解决
中等入籍的生活费高涨问题，我们也一直说要帮助贫困人家。执政党只等到上个星期才来处理这些问题。请投选我们进入国会，我们会不断的提问这些尖锐课题。我们这一些人已经站起来了，请提，请你们提起勇气投 NSP。投票是神圣的，投票是秘密的。没有人会知道你投给谁，如果有的话，他肯定是骗人的。如果有人说他知道你投给反对党，请快点去报警。<笑>谢谢，只要我们团结起来，就能夺回我们的家园。谢谢。Friends and fellow Singaporeans, thank you for attending tonight's rally at Mountbatten. We all know the issues facing Singapore today, so tonight I will focus on the party's proposal for some national issues and for the constituency of Marine Parade. Much has been said about the opposition highlighting the social ills of the nation without proposing solutions for growing the economy. Hey, what's wrong with the mic? <laughs> Is it a PAP? <laughs> Here at the NSP, we believe that. Okay, sorry guys, bear with me. Ah,、uh. here at the NSP, we believe that economic growth and a better quality of life for the people can go hand in hand. Let me elaborate further. We are suffering. Because items have become more expensive, but wages have remained stagnant. This is partly due to the global economic situation, but it is also due to national policies. We may not be able to control commodity prices, but we can review national policies that put a strain on Singaporeans. I'm talking about things like the cost of public services. The increase in GST, rising property prices, and ERP. The single largest factor that is preventing our wages from increasing is the large supply of foreign workers who are willing to accept lower pay. Now, much has been said about foreigners in the past few days, but I fear that our anger may have been misdirected. It is not their fault. That our wages have stagnated. It is not, therefore, that our property prices have skyrocketed, and it is not, therefore, that we are all forced to pack ourselves like sardines in the MRT train. No, my friends, the real target of our anger is the PAP government. But what's done is done. So how do we move on? This is what the NSP proposes. Number one, we should review industries on a case-by-case -case basis and allow work permits for industries unpopular with Singaporeans. This is to ensure that we have people to do the job that Singaporeans are unable to do. Next, when elected, we will also push for a review of the foreign worker levy. This must comprise two elements. The first. Is an amount equivalent to employer CPF contribution for Singaporeans. Number two, we need an amount that gives Singaporeans a better employment chance over foreigners. The NSP is not pushing for GDP growth. We do not believe in pegging our bonuses to GDP growth. The NSP is pushing for wage growth. Higher wages will mean a better quality of life for all you Singaporeans, and less of a strain from the rising cost of living. 
as we grow economically, we have to ensure that no Singaporean is left behind. We need to focus on developing industries that better match the abilities and inclinations of the people. We need to create employment that adds value to the people of Singapore. For instance, given the quickly rising population, why haven't we looked into expanding our healthcare industry to ensure that the quality of healthcare does not decline? Every year, talented young Singaporeans do not make it to medical school because the quota has remained stagnant and overly stringent. Shouldn't we encourage expanding the medical industry to meet the rising demands of healthcare? I now want to talk about our plans for the Marine Parade constituency. But before I get into that, I would like to say a few words about my motivation. When I was in university, I taught eight tuition kids, on top of juggling my extracurricular activities. I was never the kind of tutor to run off and cancel on my students once my own exams were around the corner, because I had a moral responsibility to educate them. I remember teaching a girl who was failing primary five. Her foundation was not so good because she had a difficult family situation. Her mother had a stroke and the family had to sell their house and live with their grandparents. When I first taught her, I always told her two things. You are responsible for your own future and you have a choice as to how you want to make things work out for you. I wouldn't say it was easy. I had to scold her many times, but it paid off. She ended up going from the brink of being retained in primary five to actually qualifying for secondary school express. My friends, the point is this. People can only take responsibility for themselves if you instill confidence in them and you empower them to do so. What we have, on the other hand, is a government that only knows how to pay lip service to creative thinking, when in fact, they cannot accept different opinions from them. I don't think it's fair to say that the youth of today are apathetic, but I can't help but feel that our education system promotes the wrong reasons for doing things. Let us look at community service, for example. Instead of volunteering to give back to the community, students are forced to carry donation tins and sell flags in order to chalk up CCA points. From there, people don't even know why they are helping the community and they just go through the motions without really understanding the point of it all. But if youths were to understand how their actions can shape their society, they would be inspired to act rather than to do things out of necessity. If I am elected, I want to identify clusters in the constituency where there may be opportunities for inter-school mentorship. This means that students can have an avenue to mentor their peers who are not doing too well in their studies or to be a helping hand for students who have problems at home. I think that this is more relevant than having a buddy system for our MPs. Another segment of the population that I'm interested in is the aged. We must find ways to ensure that our senior citizens can continue to lead happy and fulfilling lives by staying engaged in the community and ensuring that they have enough to get by the rest of their days. I intend to work closely with SMEs and local businesses to encourage the organising of activities for senior citizens and for them to have an ownership in the community that they serve. I feel very strongly about this, and I believe that the young are our future. They must be nurtured.
and the old are responsible for all that we have today. They must be honoured. As opposition candidates, we cannot promise you upgrading. I'm sorry. I pay my own boy day. <laughs> but we can promise you that we will keep your constituency clean. And more importantly, that we will always listen to you. We will be your voice. We will fight tooth and nail for the welfare of all Singaporeans. And in addition to that, all of us at the NSP are hands-on sort of people. I don't believe in like creating some committee and sitting around talking about things. Just roll up your sleeves and do what needs to be done. We have too much red tape at this moment. Let us change that. So my friends, as you go to the polls this May 7th, I want you to remember three things. Number one, Government is a place where the people come together and nobody gets left behind. Yeah. Number two, vote for a party that will speak up for you and be your humble servant, not a government that threatens you or hold you to ransom. Yeah. And number three, your vote is secret and no one will know which party you voted for. So go ahead and cast a vote for the party you wish to serve you and be proud for having done so. Thank you and good night.